Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome attacking game. A lot of you have been asking me to show a few games from the uh, Women's um, uh, FIDE Grand Prix in Gibraltar that happened a few days ago and uh, this is the one that I chose. The tournament is already over. Jansa Abdul Malik won the tournament uh, without a single loss and uh, not only did she won the, win the tournament, uh, she won her Grandmaster title and uh, this is uh, one game I decided to show but uh, if you guys know of any great games uh, from the event, do... Uh, uh, share it using hashtag suggestion. I will uh, I will go through it. So here, uh, Jansa faces Antoinetta Stefanova, former uh, women's world champion from Bulgaria uh, from 2006 till 2008. Uh, so uh, while she was facing her, she was still an international master. Always uh, difficult when, when you're facing um, uh, such an experienced grandmaster. But this game, it's really a beauty. Uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Abdul Malik opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now uh, d4. Uh, it's been a while since we had a nice scotch game. Uh, we have e captures on d4, knight captures, and now queen to f6. Bishop to c5 is the most played move here, and then you can, uh, of course, combine it with queen to f6. Queen to uh, f6 a bit more rare, but uh, still, still played quite a lot. Uh, and here, knight to b3. Now, this is already very rare. Bishop to e3, just guarding the knight while developing a piece, kind of is, is the usual way people do it. But knight to b3, uh, it will serve a very, uh, very nice purpose, as you'll see. We have queen to g6, a standard move when playing uh, against this setup, putting pressure on the g2 pawn, attacking the e4 pawn. Here, uh, Jansa defends it with f3, and now comes bishop to d6. And here, with this bishop to d6 move, you see that, um, uh, black does not really have a good square to, to develop this bishop. Uh, you want to develop this knight to e7, so the bishop obviously is not coming to e7. You can't really bring it to c5. Now the knight from b3 nicely defends this, and if you go bishop to b4 check, um, uh, well, white will simply play bishop to d2, and you don't uh, you don't really gain anything by this, or, or, or even c3 is possible. Uh, but here we have bishop to d6. This is what black usually plays against this setup. Knight to c3, and now comes knight g to e7. Uh, here there is a trick that you, you might try. Bishop captures on h2. I know a lot of you are, are interested in this. Bishop captures on h2. Uh, rook captures and queen g3 check. Why doesn't black just play this? Well, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because after the king moves, obviously you have to capture the rook, otherwise you're just going to be down to too much material, uh, knight to d5 comes. And it seems like, okay, but the queen is guarding c7, there is no threat here. Uh, but there is a, a really great threat, and, uh, well, bishop to f4 is coming, there, there's not much you can do about it, especially if you play something like, let's say, play knight to f6, knight e7, you try to finish development, the bishop to f4, and it's game over. There's no playing this. The queen is under attack, or you're already threatening this. And if queen to h4, trying to say, okay, if you capture it, then maybe I'm going to be able to capture here. Uh, you can uh, just play something like knight captures here, king moves and queen to d6, guarding the bishop, and it's a uh, total annihilation. There's no, no playing this for black. So while you could maybe, you know, play play something better, uh, it's definitely not suggested to play something like this. So here knight g to e7, black just wants to finish development. And now this position has been reached before, there were some moves, uh, pawn to g4 is the most usual move that's played here. But here we have f4 and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how black deals with this. While you could just castle here, uh, black decides to go bishop to b4 first. Now the knight is pinned, of course queen captures on e4 is the threat uh, so now just f5 uh, pushing back the queen queen to f6 and now comes the bishop to d3 so just continuing development maybe preparing to castle here and uh, here you really have to uh, allow white to sacrifice a pawn uh, you really have nothing better other than to, uh, for example captures with check pawn captures queen captures and now after bishop to d2 the queen now guards the rook here uh, okay the, the the rook was already guarded but still uh, we're just gonna play the queen back now white's gonna castle and uh, well black is very much behind in development but nothing uh, nothing too serious is happening uh, of course you have to be very careful but uh, you will be you will be able to play this. However, in the game, Black decided that maybe it's a bit too much uh, going after this pawn. We're already behind on development, so here Bishop to d6 was played, but now comes uh, well n now there will be trouble uh, because here okay if White castles then you will 
probably go for something like queen h4 threaten this checkmating pattern with bishop captures on h2 and if this then we can just uh, sacrifice here and get a draw by perpetual which for black maybe isn't such a bad idea uh, for, for, from this position however uh, Shansa plays queen to h5 and now uh, there is no more castling because now if you castle then you've allowed castles uh, and now that uh, well the, the, there's really not much you can do against bishop to g5 for example if h6 you're just going to play g4 now g5 is coming and it, it's just a uh, uh, unplayable position for black whatever you play let's say make a move g5 is coming h captures we're going to play bishop captures and after the queen moves uh you really don't care uh there's no uh, queen captures here because the queen covers the h2 square you're just going to play rook f3 rook h3 and you're going to checkmate the black king if g6 you don't care just f captures knight captures and now for example knight to d5 because the knight just moves this knight is coming to f6 that's i mean this th this game is over so instead, after this queen to h5, uh, you really don't have a good move. Uh, a5 was played, uh, because wh what else to play? Uh, I mean, not, nothing is really happening. Uh, here we have castles by white, and now a4. And this is just a bit too much. Now we don't really care about the knight here. We just play bishop to g5. Uh, we have queen to e5, and now bishop back to f4. The rook from f1 guards the bishop here. Uh, we have queen to f6. Uh, probably the least painful uh, move for black is just to give up the queen here for... Uh, for a piece and the rook and say okay maybe maybe i can hold this although you really can't uh this is the equivalent of resigning uh queen back to f6 was played and now e5 e5 is uh, incredible uh, because the e5 square is covered three times by black but uh white doesn't care here we have bishop captures on e5 and now feel free to pause the video here and win this game for white uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that it's a similar position from the one in the thumbnail and uh, you should be able to find it. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to e4. And this is just now crazy. All of these squares are taken away from the black queen and you don't have a move here. So you could capture on f5, which is what happened in the game. But now, now comes the good stuff. Knight to d6 with check. Now we've reached the position from the thumbnail. And uh, basically, if this was uh, a game for maybe uh, from an event that's not so important, maybe we'd see a resigns here. But in the actual game, we, we saw a few more moves. So black captured on d6. We have bishop captures on f5, uh, not knight captures on f5, but first uh, a captures on b3, grabbing this knight. Bishop captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and now bishop to e4. So black will still uh, attempt a few moves. Uh, so pawn captures on a2. You do have a pass pawn on a2, so it might be possible to do something. But now queen d1, going after the d6 pawn, uh, we have rook to a6 defending the pawn, and now bishop to d5, now getting rid of the passed pawn, and once you eliminate this, then black really has nothing to play for. So here rook to a5 going after the bishop, just bishop captures on a2. We have d5, now this is defended, but you don't care. Queen e1 attacks the rook here, we have knight to c6. Uh, now attacking the rook, also adding uh, a, a little more protection to this knight here, uh, and now b4. And this is now the cleanest way to end the game. It's simply beautiful uh, how Abdul Malik does it. Uh, attacks the rook, rook to b5, and now c3. Adding another defender to the pawn here, and now preparing to end the game, because after castle was played, just queen to e2, attacking the rook, and that's it. There's no way to defend the rook, you have to play rook to b6, and now b5, and that's it. It was in this position, on move 28, that Antoinette Stefanova resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. The knight is under attack, you can't move it, the pawn is defended, if you move the knight, you lose this knight, uh, and then, of course, uh, you will be down simply too much material. So, yeah, like I said, the, the game could have been resigned on move 17 if it was maybe a less important game, but since it's a very important game, it lasted a, a whole 28 moves. But really an impressive attacking game, and it's been a while since we've see, seen a, a nice Scotch, mini, a Scotch miniature. And it really just all went down to black prolonging castles, but you, it was never really a good a good idea. And even if you castled in a position where it was okay, uh, you would still allow white to have a to have a very nice attack. But all in all, a great game. And like I said, uh, Jansa uh, won the Grandmaster's title. She crossed the 2500 ELO uh, rating and uh, well uh, won, won the tournament without uh, without a single loss. Uh, these are the winners. Uh, let me just find it. These are the winners. Uh, Abdul Malik in, in the middle, 
uh, Maria Muzichuk on the left and uh, uh, Gune Mamajada uh, on the uh, on the right, uh, scoring uh, th third place. So very very nicely done. Congratulations uh, on the world's newest grandmaster, and uh, ho hope we see many more games like this. I've checked out some of her other games. She's a very aggressive player, uh, plays a very interesting chess, very very much attacking chess. So if you guys want to see some more games, do uh, share in, in the comment section below. And like I said, if you want to see any other games from the event, do use hashtag suggestion, and we're gonna go uh, through all of your suggestions. So, yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kaihan Gultekin, uh, Evgeny Brishkin, Mario Gudel, Mark London, and Jeffrey Turner for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.